Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? So, we are in the glowing sea today. We're going to take advantage of Andrew CX's workbench anywhere and build something a little different, seeing as it went down very well last week. So, as always, if you like what you see, do hit that big red button and let's get stuck in. So, I had a bit of a run around the glowing sea to find out where I wanted to actually build. See where we are near the church, the relay tower there. Got the Atlantic offices and uh, crater of atoms just down here. So, fairly smack bang in the middle, well off the beaten track. I did try building somewhere else first, but that turned out to be a total disaster, so we'll skip over that. As the workshop doesn't actually give you a green boundary when you use this mod, I've used these uh, picket fence posts to sort of mark out the extreme outer edge, which we're not going to be anywhere near, but it was interesting to see just how far out we can get. See those uh, two rocks in the middle there are uh, the central point where the workbench is. So, plan is to build around this particular outcropping. So I wanted somewhere sort of vaguely sheltered and uh, out of sight. So it's uh, not going to be stumbled across by anybody. Not that anybody's really going to wander around the glowing sea anyway. As you can clearly see, I've got um, only clear weather running at the minute. Because uh, as cool as it would be to see this thing with the full glowing sea effect on, we'll save that for the uh, final completed tour, so we can actually see what we're doing at this stage. So the premise behind this is that um, it's going to be a home for a ghoul who has uh, some time ago decided uh, the uh, Society of the Commonwealth is even more feral than your average ghoul, and decided to turn his back on it and go and live in the glowing sea, since he won't be affected by the radiation. And he's obviously been here a while, built himself up a, a home and made it nice and secure. At least that'll be the end result anyway. So this uh, took me a while to get going on, and uh, as I said, my first effort elsewhere, which was quite a cool idea. It's actually over the church, sort of over behind where we are now. And so it was quite a cool idea, but uh, it turned out to be a total nightmare to try and do anything with, so I ended up uh, sort of switching back to this plan. So we're going to uh, work on various levels and try and wrap this thing a bit around the outcropping here. Try and make use of the environment we've got. So I've got a few uh, foundation pieces in, that's the word I'm looking for, to begin with. I'm just going to uh, smooth out those gaps a little bit. Use the concrete pillar, which you may have noticed is looking a little different, because of the recent update to Ardnock Settlement Objects, which is huge and awesome by the way. Oh, the menus are even slower than they were. He has all, Andrew CX, that being, has uh, also uh, reorganised it all. So it's uh, even more sensible than it was before. But it takes a while to find stuff again. Because I've uh, not got used to it yet. So I've used a fair few of these uh, warehouse floors on the gaps because they're much happier to snap through things. And it breaks up the textures a bit as well, which is cool. Get some walls on so we can sort of see what we're working with. There's a fair bit of whoop, fair bit of group selected in the group selecting needed here, even. You can see that was not going in there. This is a, a prime example of where I have to uh, improvise to get a wall built. It's one of the drawbacks of not snapping stuff together, but the results is pretty cool. This was an interesting one. This thing seemed quite happy to snap straight through the surface of the rock here. So we'll see it in a second. Actually, there we go. Yeah, as you can see. Which my first thought was no, but I uh, changed my mind, as you can see now. And I uh, thought we'll go with that, because we can uh, use the... You assume it's been cut off, and uh, sort of use the rock wall as a bit of a, a feature, make things look a bit more interesting. Which I quite like the look of it. So this is probably the longest single uh, flat piece in it. I've tried to keep things on different levels, make it look uh, improvised and adapting to the uh, environment. And to be fair, most of these pieces went in relatively easily. Some of the ones that I had to use the concrete pillar to sink in uh, were a bit more awkward. Yeah, unfortunately that one's floating a little bit, so we'll uh, change the plan a little bit there. Yeah, if I was using the concrete pillar, as long as you make sure that the bottom of the pillar is below the lowest point of the foundation, then you can sink it in. 
It limits how far you can sink it because it's a little bit shorter, but it does work. There's also uh, a few different posts and pillars been added in with the uh, new texture on them, which makes it a lot easier to measure with them as well. And it uh, gives you a few more options, which you use smaller objects or taller objects to uh, sink things in with, which is very, very handy. Andrew CX has obviously been watching closely what we've all been doing. Not that I'm assuming he's watching me, but you know. I'm probably thinking no respawns really there. So, this is one of the new textures he's added to the uh, metal tab. It's basically recolored and uh, reskinned all the existing stuff, so a lot more options in there, which we were in dire need of because it was a very limited, I think is a good word for that, tab. There wasn't much selection available, but particularly for a build here in the Glowing Sea, these new options with the, the rusted metal and green metal and stuff make it uh, a lot more suitable to the environment. Had a bit of fun getting a wall in here. It eventually went in. We'll have to uh, close up the gap manually in a bit. Which to be fair, I don't think I actually showed you it myself doing. I've showed a few bits and pieces of that. But there was an awful lot of it, so I skipped over some of it. As I say, this is uh, something of a part one. Because... Um, this build took quite a while to figure it out, so I didn't go in with much of a plan beyond multiple levels and wrap it around this uh, outcropping of rock here. So it sort of uh, grew on its own accord, which also added uh, to the time it took to build the thing, unfortunately. And as the ideas I've got for uh, the next part and continuing on with the build are sizable, it should be uh, quite interesting and quite a good sized build by the time I'm done. So we can start uh, another slightly lower layer around the front. Unfortunately, it won't snap to the stairs, but the stairs do make a good guide of uh, sort of how high I wanted the floor. So just use that floor piece there just so that we can get the uh, two staircases lined up for group selecting them in. As a rule of thumb, I probably would not recommend trying to glitch the stairs in from this particular angle, because you can't see how low you're sinking them. Happens I got fairly lucky with this one. It allowed me to line it up more easily, but so the height thing is uh, hit and miss. There we go. You see, I got really quite lucky there. So, obviously, this floor's not going to snap on. So, I want to remember where I've left my pillar. There it is. You can see those markings on it make it a lot easier to sort of measure things for uh, sinking. Which is quite handy. I didn't really need to use it too much on this one, but it will certainly come in useful at some point. So we'll line this up and then drop it down a little bit. As you can see, I didn't lower it quite far enough there, so we'll have to do that again. So the drawback from doing it to... rather, the drawback to doing it from the side is that uh, whilst you can see the height, you can't really see the line so clearly. Which actually wouldn't have mattered too much for this one, but... I did want it to line up with the stairs, so... Never really used this floor piece before with a hole in it, because I'd never find a practical use for it, and it just seemed more annoying than anything else, but... For this one, I thought basically it's going to uh, add to the rough and ready look of the place quite well. Doesn't really matter if it's a bit... improvised. So I'll carefully glitch those together and get a bit of an angle on there. It's a bit fussy about how high it'll go, but it sits reasonably level, so shouldn't be too much of a problem. Don't have to worry about subtle far thing here. If I could figure out using the NPC tab how to get a ghoul to actually live here, I will do that, but uh might be a bit of a challenge. We'll see. So the end product of this will be pretty huge, so I figure that it's probably been here quite some time. Need some fairly sizable defences to keep the wildlife at bay. We'll uh, come up with something along those lines in a, in the next part, probably. Because uh, I've used most of the uh, interesting wood floors already, I thought I'd put four small ones together and uh, create something a little different. Slide this into place. There's a limit to how far under you can get the pillar to go. If you move back and then 
st so I stand a little further back, it tends to work a bit easier. And up to a point at leaving and ignore the collision on the legs of the uh, foundation pieces, which is always good. So I actually ended up pulling this bit out, partly because it was uh, rubbish, partly because it'd be a lot easier to put the walls on first. And it'll give you some idea of what I plan to do in future with uh, regard to making the place look less like it's floating. Well, again, that'll be in the next part, I think. But, in principle, it'll be a case of group sighting things underneath and just plugging up the gaps. Certainly on these uh, regular floor pieces rather than the foundations. Yeah, it's totally wonky there. So, use some more of these interesting metal textures. That's one of the rusted ones, I think. Other than the green one, which I was getting a little too attached to. Decided I wasn't really happy with the uh, wooden floor piece that I used there, which is, again, from the warehouse tab, but... So, we'll swap it out for one of the uh, grated ones. Break up that texture a little bit. And there we go. So for the most part, because it's in the glowing sea, I wanted it to be reasonably sealed. And obviously there's a limit to just how much of that you can handle, and it's not like the ghoul needs to worry about the radiation. However, I also don't want it too exposed to the storms. But that said, I did want on this uh, front edge here at least a couple of places to look out and then you can sort of see out across the open area in front and across what will probably become uh, the front area of his little fortress, I suppose, it'll ultimately end up being. Once I put a few more of the ideas together. So as I couldn't get a wall to snap into this piece here, just to our right of the stairs here, I've pulled that line of stairs out and then uh, snapped a small floor underneath to the stairs so I've got a guide to uh, put it back in. Though I decided here that I didn't actually want to put the st second staircase back in anyway, so... Useful technique anyway. So I'll get some walls around the inside here and mix those textures again. These ones actually went in for the most part nice and easily. Despite the sort of clipping through there on the floors. It didn't seem to have any issues with it. This bit was a little more awkward, but nothing major. No, you'll see that bit in a bit. I'm getting a bit too much of a straight edge on here, so... Shuck wall and reef on here. Yeah, it's a little bit open, but not too open, which is sort of what I was going for. And forget my build order again. This gaps plugs up, and there we go. So I did think again about having a, an open piece, this one here, up here, but so you can sort of see out across the glowing sea and uh, snipe at any uh, wildlife that gets too close. But uh, I decided actually in the end it was just too open, too much. So we closed it off with this one. And plugging that gap there turned out to be uh, an absolute nightmare, but uh, it was basically a case of group selecting and uh, pushing things in to block the gaps up, but it was a bit of a faff to do, to be honest. I'll spare you my faffing around and show you the principle on a few other bits, but then I'll skip over the uh, fiddling around with that last bit there. So... Now we've got some of the walls in, at least the easily snappable ones. We've got the roof on. Now we can sort of see what we're working with a bit better. Gone for the sloped corrugated reeves. There are lower slopes on the bottom half and then the steeper ones on the top. There we go. For the most part it just snaps in. There's a few gaps, but I don't really mind that. In this section it was adamant it was only going on one way round, so... Shall have to make do with that. So, yeah, close up this corner a little bit. As I say, there's no real clear plan in mind. It's a bit of jump from place to place, do whatever sort of springs to mind at the time. Which is why we're all over the place a little bit, but it helps creates it helps to create, I should say, the feel of the place in the way that I wanted it to, so. Reasonably happy with that. Yeah, another one of the metal walls. 
Okay, so we're going to work on the uh, big gap in the lower section here. Give him his uh, sort of window. We'll put a railing on. I didn't quite like the height of the single height pieces, so we'll glitch a couple of them together. Get group select pieces from closely together so they're not clipping through too much, but so they're neat and tidy like that. And move it in. And this turned out to be a right pain. Initially I pulled the wall off, as you sort of see to the right there. Just so that it would uh, not have too much trouble with the collision. I thought it would probably snap back in okay. However, I was wrong. So the wall work goes back in and we'll glitch the uh, sort of railing in afterwards. Fortunately, because we haven't got any uh, flat floor to start off on down here, everything's angled. Getting the level with the floor right was extremely difficult. Took a, got, I think I've shown about three attempts here, but it must take me seven or eight just to get it flush with the floor. And that was uh, something of a running theme through uh, the latter phase of this build, once I started plugging gaps and stuff. Trying to get things level so that they just sit right was a bit of a nightmare. But we got there in the end, got it nice and lined up. There we go, success. So, close this little gap off here. And I figure out what I'm doing. There we go. Bit more warehouse floor, I think it was in here in the end. Was it? No, okay, maybe it was just shack floors. And once again, group select one of the half walls. This is one of my favourite ones, that one. I see we use it an awful lot. It's uh, scrappy enough, but not too scrappy. And that plugs the gap quite nicely as it happens. I'll probably tidy up the edges a little bit eventually, but uh, it's rather dull. <laughs> Yet more group select, so didn't need to watch that bit. With these metal pieces, getting the uh, half walls to snap into the end, if they'll do it at all, which I'm not entirely sure they will, is awkward at best, so it's a, a group select job again. So at the top of that little staircase between the two levels here, and this little section was one of the hardest to get right. Initially I'm using a angled corrugated roof with the corner cut out so you've got the clearance so you can get up the stairs. I actually end up pulling it out and replacing it with a, uh, a flat roof on the lower section and then one of the full steep angled corrugated ones just snapped onto the upper section. Obviously there's a gap between the two there so I just took some uh, shack railings and group selected those in to plug up the gap. You'll see a little bit in the tour in a moment. But, uh, it looks much better than what I've tried to do so far so I'm much happier with that. So I did initially try to close this gap off before I put the roof on, but uh, the end result was uh, rather cockeyed, to be honest. So I put the roof back on and then group it in. I'm using the line of the roof rather than the line of the floor to dictate where the wall's going to go. There we go. And then there's just this last one here. I actually did close the gap behind this using a uh, corrugated piece, but that took absolutely ages of fiddling around and it was the same principle, so. Let's have a look around the, uh, if not finished thing, at least the uh, completed part for this moment. So as you can see, there's a, a lot of need to close off the bottom, which will be uh, done in the next part. I think I'll close off those stairs a bit more as well. I'm going to post there uh, supporting this bit of roof. There we go, it looks much more tidy. And it's ramshackle away. Need to just sort out where I'm going to put some internal reams as well, a few internal walls to divide it up a bit. And it should look pretty cool. I've got a bit of a gap there on the right, but again, I don't mind that too much. It's sheltered by the surface of the rock anyway. The top there, just to plug that little gap over on the left there, we've got um, a couple of angled roofs from Custom Vanilla Assets that are doing the job quite nicely. So another group select job. There you go, you can see my blocking off of that awkward corner there. And we'll head back on out.
So, interesting start. Plenty to build on from here. Do hope you enjoyed. If you did, do hit those buttons for me. Share it around. It's always very much appreciated. And you can find my social media links down in the description. And I will be speaking to you all very, very soon. Thank you very much.